would deny that Satanism was really that bad, that it was exaggerated. Uh, I personally believe that it's real. And, you know, it happened during the ancient times with the Druids and all them. Um, yeah, we're in the modern age, but uh, Satan hasn't changed, you know, with his call for sacrifice. Well, and I, I can picture it happening. Well, Jeff, it's a horrible thing to imagine. It's it horrible is. to imagine that children are kidnapped for to be human sacrifices at this particular time of the year. None of us wants to believe that. We want to believe that we're civilized people and that this just doesn't happen. Right, exactly. You know, I think mm -hmm. we mustn't... Our opinions um, are very emotional opinions. The opinions mm -hmm. of God and what he says in the Bible is truth. And we need to understand that uh, God talked against children's sacrifices. In the Old Testament, we know that the pagan nations offered right. children Bail. to as blood sacrifices. Um, we know this has gone on. In my culture, I was born and raised in India. I lived there for the first 20 years of my life. I lived in the Kali. city of, <laughs> I lived in the city of Kali. Kali, and Kali uh -huh. has to have blood sacrifice. Right. Um, even though we don't like to think of it, uh, the Bible says that Satan is a god of destruction, a destroyer. Um, he is out to kill, destroy. He was a murderer from the beginning, the Bible says. Jesus yeah. said that um, everything will get worse and worse in the latter days. So while we, as um, a civilized society, want to think that everything's getting better and better, we have to go to the Bible as our plumb line and our foundation. And Amen. we're told by God that things are going to get worse and worse. Right. <laughs> that um, people are going to wax. The hearts worse. are going, going to grow cold. That people are going to be selfish and lawlessness is going to thrive. All we have to do right. is look at the growing crime rates today, the growing murderers, the growing um, murder, you know, the, the statistics to realize that things are not getting better, even though uh, technology may be advancing, but the human heart is the problem. Um, yeah, I've made amen. several movies. Um, I don't know because I missed the beginning. I don't know if you introduced me as a movie maker, but I've made up yeah. to over 70 documentaries, and several of them have been on Halloween, on witchcraft, on Satanism, and I've interviewed witches and Satanists and pagans. And um, some of them will admit to having been involved in blood sacrifices. Uh, one of them admits to being involved in human sacrifice. Um, Doreen Irvine, who was once the ruling witch of Western Europe and the British Isles, and she was the mistress of the high priest of Satan um, in that same area in England. And uh, she is now converted. She's become a... Uh, a spirit-filled, born-again Christian, and she says if Christian parents had any idea of what Halloween really is, they wouldn't even mention the word around the children. I mean, here is a woman who knows. Uh, she really knows about what she's speaking. I interviewed another uh, Satanist. Her story was absolutely awful in a movie called um, uh, Satanism, uh, The Rise of Satanism. And, you know, these people are talking. They're not just one-off people. They are talking about deeply traumatizing things that happened in their lives. And um, there is something going on, Jeff, in the Christian church that happened um, about 300 years after Christ resurrected. The, uh, it was the idea that um, it came from the, uh, the fellow, uh, somebody called Augustine. And Augustine was the founding father of the Roman Catholic Church. In fact, Augustinianism is the theology that Roman Catholicism is based on. And Augustine believes that the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ 
that we're in it right now, that for the last 2,000 years we've been in the reign of Jesus Christ who is ruling from the heavens and that Satan is bound in the pit of hell. Now, this is the majority teaching of Christians today. They don't believe that Satan is alive and well on planet Earth. They don't believe that Satan and his demons are roaming around and able to influence us. That's why they don't believe that these horrible things are taking place at this time of year and other times. So, you know, if we don't go back to the Bible, Jeff, we are going to be caught up in men's opinions and the opinions of um, people that really aren't basing their facts and statistics on truth because Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus is the truth. The word of God is the truth, and the truth is letting us know what exists and what's happening. So we can either go by the opinions of men, or we can go by the opinions of God in the Bible. Right, exactly. I, You know, that, that's the thing nowadays is a lot of Christians are, uh, not, I shouldn't say all of them, but there, there's a lot of them, though, that are, are illiterate. Um, when it comes to scriptures, just the basics, you know, about Satan becoming an angel of light. And uh, it it warns Christians not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. I mean, right there uh, is, uh, you know, God warning us right there that um, Satan's very crafty. And, uh, you know, I've always admired uh, you as a, you know, a voice out there all these years. Now, um, I was going to ask you, um, I'm sure you went through a lot of trials with your ministry. Um, have you um, noticed a difference? Is there more folks out there like you that are exposing darkness, or or has it been kind of uh, become a little bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, you know, were they apathetic or not as concerned as they used to be? Because I know back in the 80s, it seemed like there was uh, a whole bunch of books put out. And, you know, I'm a reader. I've been a reader now for the past 20 years, and I remember picking up books. And um, I've always admired you because you've always been a, a really strong voice and really spelled things out. And it's like we need Christians like that that are strong, that are speaking out, and I just always um, admire people like you, and Bob Larson's another one, or there's a few others out there, but um, I'm wondering if um, with the day and and age we live in, with the um, emergent church and all the friendly seeker kind of movements going on, that um, folks like you are kind of dying out, or is that true? Well, Jeff, thank you so much for your very encouraging comments, and um, mm-hmm. um, I'm I'm very grateful for um, your kindness. I think that there have always been people that love the Lord Jesus Christ, and when you have a love for him and take his word seriously, then you're going to be very outspoken, and you will not allow yourself to be compromised. Um, mm mm-hmm. It is difficult because, uh, obviously, the more outspoken you are, uh, the narrower people think you are. But I remember a Mm -hmm. video show I was on recently, and someone called in and said I was very narrow. And I actually take that as a compliment because um, (laughs) Jesus said narrow is the way. And um, Jesus said he was the truth, and that's extremely narrow. Um, one person having truth, uh, only being able to get to the Father through one person, only being mm-hmm. able to have um, the forgiveness of sins through one cross, only being able to have eternal life through uh, one salvation that has been um, put forward in the Bible. All these things are very narrow, and it demands um, faith in the promises of a faithful God, a true God, Um, a God of his word, but out there in the world, um, a lot of people, if they they don't stick closely to the word of God, then it's very easy to get compromised and um, There you go. That's what's going on. And that's what's going on to some extent, Um, you know, with... um, I think there are a lot of um, wonderful Christians that are standing on the Mm -hmm. truth, um, and will not uh-huh. be compromised. But 
I think as marketing yeah. techniques get cleverer and cleverer, as the emergent church, um, which mm -hmm. actually got birthed through the seeker friendly, through the mega church movement, through um, the marketing techniques of uh, Peter Drucker, who, um, I mean, today the marketing techniques using the internet, using statistics, wanting to get bigger and huger crowds. Um, you have to make a, a much more wider gospel, if you will, because when you're trying to um, encourage crowds to come into the church, you can't. They, they feel, the emergents feel that you mustn't tell everybody that they're a sinner. You mustn't tell everybody that they need salvation through only one way. But if you keep it very open and um, let people understand that God is love, not judgment, then you'll have in bigger crowds. So we get this book mm -hmm. like The Shack, which um, was a yeah, top, I, number one New York bestseller, and it sold yeah. 7 million copies. Um, I looked into that the other day when you mentioned that to me. Yeah, I, I wasn't even aware of that. Mm -hmm. It's a massive book that got into the Christian market and changed the minds of hundreds of thousands of Christians who really fell for the God in the shack. But the God in the shack is a, uh, God is a black woman. Now, I've got nothing wrong against, I mean, you know, I don't, I'm not a racist and I'm, I used to be a right. feminist. So there's nothing wrong with women and black women, but God has completely been redefined by the author William P. Young. He calls himself Paul. Uh, he he used to, I mean, he was a Christian, but he embraced mm -hmm a Christian uh, heresy called Christian universalism. And right. Christian universalism believes that um, all paths, many roads lead to God. And um, that Christian no. universalism, also known as universal reconciliation, says that love is the supreme attribute of God that trumps above all other attributes and characteristics of God and that um, they refuse the idea that Christ um, had to, you know, they, they don't believe in fallen angels. They believe that the devil himself cannot be left in the universe um, without being loved by God and that God is going to uh, even embrace uh, Satan into heaven and uh, that even the fallen angels are going to be delivered from hell and enter heaven and that uh, all people are going to be overcome by the love of God. Well, this all sounds very nice and very appealing, but it's not what the Bible says. We've all right. fallen short. We've all sinned. We are all vulnerable for judgment. God, who is a holy God, cannot have sinners in his presence. And he sent his only begotten son to become sin on our behalf, to take the penalty of our sin so that we could right. be in the presence of God and uh, t and he took the penalty and the judgment. Well, with perfect love comes judgment. Every uh -huh. parent knows that Amen. if they love their child, they will discipline their child. If they care for their child, they're going to have to make judgments. They're going to have to make calls. And they're going to have to let their yea be yea and their no be no. So... Mm -hmm. Here we've got this universalistic gospel, the Christian universalistic gospel of the shack, where no God is a black woman, and Jesus is this cool, hippie kind of cool dude, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit is this Asian woman. Well, we are being taught to get involved in goddess worship. This is about... Uh, you know that God has become yeah. a goddess, and this heresy is absolutely unbelievable. It, they don't believe in the Trinity, which fits perfectly with the Muslim God, because even though Jesus is mentioned <coughs> excuse me, over 75 times in the Koran, it is not the Jesus of the Bible. Isa mm -hmm. is not part of the Trinity. They, the Muslims do not believe, even though they will say that their God is the same as the God of the Bible, it's not true. Allah is a moon God. On top of every mosque, you'll see a crescent moon. So Allah is not right. the God of the Bible. And if the Muslims the have the same God of the Bible, 
they wouldn't hate the Jews as much as they do, but they absolutely hate the Jews. The Jews are infidels, so are the Christians. So Mm -hmm. what's happening, Jeff, is in the end times we're told that all these religions have got to come together, all paths have to lead to God. So we get this kind of universalist teaching in the shack which starts Mm -hmm. telling people that there's no eternal punishment for sin, there's no reason to even focus on sin, that God's justice, uh, the way of the cross where mercy triumphs isn't um, the way at all. There's a much better 